Exchange-traded funds have exploded in popularity since 2003, going from 276 of them to well over 8,000 as of 2022. ETFs are a great way for average people like us to build wealth in the stock market because they're the perfect investment to hold in places like a Roth IRA, HSA, and taxable investment account. But not all ETFs are created equally, and with over 8,000 of them out there, it's extremely difficult to figure out which ones you should be investing in, because I can tell you that 99% of those 8,700 are trash and you should avoid them at all costs. In this video, I'm going to help you cut through the noise by going through my top five ETFs that you can feel comfortable buying and holding literally forever based on the criteria that you see on screen right now. Quick disclaimer, these top five ETFs are all based on my personal opinion. All of these ETFs come with a risk of losing money. I'm by no means suggesting that you should hold these funds individually or altogether. Every good portfolio starts with a core holding, and the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, VTI, is a great way to start building any portfolio. Think of it like the foundation of a house that you're going to build. That's because it seeks to track the performance of the total US stock market by investing in a little under four thousand stocks. As more new companies go public and others die off, the holdings in this fund will grow and shrink accordingly. The goal of this fund is to match the returns of the overall U.S. stock market. Because this ETF holds the whole stock market, you're going to have exposure to large cap, mid cap, small cap, and micro cap stocks. It's the ultimate diversified fund for U.S. stocks. Past performance tells us nothing about how a fund will perform in the future, so keep that in mind as I go through these. The one-year return is down because we're still recovering from 2022 being a down year. Then it's in the 9% range for the three and five year. 12% for the 10 year and a little under 8% since this fund was created. A $1,000 investment into VTI since it was created would have turned into a little over $5,000 today. Quick reminder that I've chosen my best ETFs based on how well they fit into my criteria that I mentioned at the very beginning, not because of past performance. A more important thing to understand is the largest drawdowns that this fund has seen since it was created. This is going to tell you how bad things can get when the market is at its worst. As a long-term investor, if you can't hold on to the fund during the bad times, then you won't be able to profit from the returns that I just went through. VTI has been around since 2011, but I want to get a larger sample size to show you how much a fund like this can go down in value. All of these numbers are from a general total U.S. stock fund. Check out these drawdown numbers and how long it would have taken this portion of your portfolio to recover. The 2007 crash would have cut your portfolio in half. Think about that for a minute. If you had a million dollars before that, then you'd be left with $500,000. Yes, it would have eventually recovered, but you would have had to have held on for three years until it actually did so. Pretty nuts to think about and why I like to remind people to just buy, hold, and continue investing no matter what. Because if you were investing while this fund was recovering over that three year period, then you'd end up with even more money. None of these drawdowns should scare you away from this fund because as you can see, ups and downs are a part of the market cycle. It's as normal as brushing your teeth every single morning. And hopefully every single one of you brush your teeth every morning. The cost of this fund is extremely low, which is a good thing. Expenses always have and always will matter because they eat into the returns that you receive. Do not let anyone ever tell you differently. Here's a quick guide on how much fees will eat into your portfolio's future value over a 40 year period at an average annual return of 8%. The cost of VTI is 0.03% per year. So for every $1,000 you have invested, it will cost you 30 cents and only reduce your future portfolio value by 1% over 40 years. Vanguard has the risk level of this fund at a four out of five. They consider this to be moderate to aggressive. The main reason for this is because all of VTI's holdings are in stocks, which will have a wide range of price fluctuations over the short term. As long as you are holding this fund for 10 or more years, then this isn't anything to be concerned about. Since VTI is a market cap weighted fund, the sector breakdown is going to be based on that. As you can see on screen, most of the money you put into this fund is going to go into tech, healthcare, industrials, and consumer discretionary as of right now. None of this 
is a good or bad thing because the overall market is determining how much should be allocated to each one. The top 10 holdings are a lot of companies most of you recognize. As of right now, these top 10 make up about 20% of the holdings within this fund. VTI is for the investor who is looking to match the returns of the total US stock market by putting your money into terrible companies, okay companies, good companies, and great companies. If you want to reduce volatility by investing in those larger companies while also gaining exposure to those more volatile, mid, small, and micro cap companies without being too overweight in them, then VTI is the perfect ETF for you. It's really difficult to find those stocks or funds that will continue to outperform the market over the long term. So instead of trying to predict the future, this fund allows you to hold everything. As the legendary Jack Bogle once said, why look for a needle in a haystack when you can just buy the whole haystack? VTI is a great fund to hold for your US stock allocation within something like the two or three fund portfolio. I'll have my two and three fund portfolio videos linked in the playlist above my head at the end of this video and down in the description below. If you're enjoying this video and wanna help support my dog Molly as well as this channel, then hit that thumbs up button and and share the video with someone that you think it would help. If you are looking for a different core portfolio holding, then the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF VOO is a great alternative to the Vanguard Total US Stock ETF. There's really no reason to hold both at the same time if you don't have to, because there's a portfolio overlap of about 85% between the two funds. In normal person speak, this means that the holdings in VOO make up 85% of VTI, which according to math, is a lot. VOO invests in the S&P 500, which is made up of the 500 largest companies in the United States. The goal with this fund is to match the returns of the overall stock market. Now, even though this ETF only holds 500 companies, these stocks are so big and make up such a large portion of the overall stock market that it's considered to be a good gauge of overall US stock returns. When it comes to past performance, here's how it looked over the past 10 years and since inception. The one, three, five, and 10 year returns look about the same as what we saw with VTI. But the biggest difference is with the return since the fund was created. Now, VOO has a 13% average annual return, which is way higher than the average annual return of 7.8% for VTI. This can be extremely misleading because of where the stock market just happened to be when each of these funds were created. So if you're comparing the two, then it would be better to look at it based on the one, three, five, and a 10 year, which we can see are pretty darn close to each other. A $1,000 investment into VOO when it was created 12 years ago would have turned into a little over $4,000 today. Since VOO has only been around since 2010, I'm actually going to do the same thing that I did with VTI. We're going to look at the drawdowns for a general S&P 500 fund. The drawdowns for this type of fund are almost identical and only off by either a few months for when they start and a few months for how long they lasted. Also, the drawdown amounts are within 1% of each other. Remember that these things happen when you're investing. The best thing that we can do is build a well-diversified portfolio of ETFs, which is what my top five ETFs are here to help you with. VOO is also extremely low cost at 0.03% per year. For every $1,000 you have invested, it will cost you 30 cents and will only reduce your portfolio value by 1% over 40 years. Vanguard has this at a risk level of four since it's a 100% stock-based ETF, which is in line with what we would expect. Here's the sector breakdown for VOO. As you can see, a lot of the portfolio is made up of tech, healthcare, financials, and consumer discretionary. Since VOO is only made up of the 500 largest stocks, the top 10 are going to be made up of companies that we're all familiar with. These top 10 make up almost 25% of the 500 companies in the CTF. VOO is for the investor who is looking to match the performance of the US market through the 500 largest stocks. Since it doesn't have any exposure to those mid, small, and micro cap stocks, it's going to see less volatility compared to a total market fund like VTI. VOO is a great ETF to put inside something like a two or three fund portfolio. If you not only want to simplify your portfolio with these ETFs, but also simplify where you invest, then check out my investing platform of choice, M1 Finance. This thing is perfect since it was basically made for buy and hold investors. Get a free $30 from them down in the description below. Now 
that we have the foundation built with VTI or VOO, we need to start building out the rest of this diversified portfolio. The Vanguard Total International Stock ETF, VXUS, is great for that. VXUS seeks to track the performance of stocks for all of the companies outside of the United States. This ETF is made up of 7,900 stocks across the world. Here are the returns over the past one, three, five, and 10 years. Compared to the two US funds we just talked about, the performance has been terrible. So you might be asking yourself, why in the world is this crazy guy adding this to his top five? And the answer is because it meets the criteria that I mentioned at the very beginning of the video. I'll go into more detail when I talk about who this fund is for, so hang on for a minute. $1,000 invested into VXUS since it was first created 11 years ago would have turned into $1,900. Since VXUS has only been around since 2011, I'm going to pull the drawdown data from a general global XUS fund so that we can get a good look at all of them. History is a good reminder that every single person watching this right now including myself, will experience many more large downturns between now and when we eventually stop investing. The only advice that I have for times like these is to build a well-diversified portfolio ahead of time and continue investing into it no matter what's happening in the world or the stock market. The XUS is extremely low cost, coming in at 0.07% per year, or 70 cents for every $1,000 invested. As with 100% stock-based ETFs, the risk level for this one is high at a level five. Volatility is generally higher for international stocks, so that's why Vanguard has this one at a five instead of a level four like we saw with VTI and VOO. Nothing to be too concerned about if you're holding this for 10 or more years, which you would be since that's who I'm making this video for. As you can see with the sector breakdown, this ETF has most of your money going into financials, industrials, tech, and consumer cyclical. Since this is an international fund, here are the regions where your money is going. Europe, emerging markets, and the Pacific make up around 90% of it. There are a ton of countries that this fund invests in. So here are the top 10 and the percentage each one makes up. The top 10 companies are made up of a lot that you probably recognize since they're true global brands. VXUS is for the investor that is looking to own everything outside of the US. This ETF is perfect for the international portion of a two or three fund portfolio. No need to buy any other international ETF because this one has you covered by investing in everything. I'm not gonna go super deep into why I think everyone should be holding a little international. I made a whole video laying out all of my thoughts, which I'll link above my head and down in the description. But when it comes to past performance, don't let recency bias cloud your judgment. I agree that international hasn't performed well as of late but I can show you proof that there are time periods where international outperforms US. The whole point of a well-diversified portfolio is to make sure that you're covered across the globe and by refusing to hold an ETF like VXUS and only holding something like VTI or VOO, you are not truly diversified across the world. If you are looking for a mental boost, then check out Alpha Nootropic Pouches by Fully Loaded. I've been taking nootropics over the past couple of years to give me a cognitive boost and improve my memory and focus. I love these things because the flavor is great, there's no sugar, you can suck on them just like a mint, and unlike other supplements, it is packed with an effective dose. A link is in the description to pick up your alpha nootropic pouches. Use Jared25 at checkout to get 25% off your next order. Okay, I'm ready for, for a little controversy. My next favorite ETF is the Vanguard Intermediate Term Treasury ETF, VGIT. Yes, I woke up this morning and decided to choose violence by putting a bond fund in my top five here on YouTube. I feel like I just committed a crime, so maybe I should be thrown in jail. This fund seeks to provide a moderate and sustainable level of current income using US Treasury bonds. Just so we're all on the same page, short-term bonds mature in less than two years, intermediate-term bonds mature in two to 10 years, and long-term bonds mature in over 10 years. This is an intermediate fund. Don't worry, we'll discuss why I put this one on the list in that part of the video to so settle down. Here are the returns over the past one, three, five, and 10 years. 
Let me remind you that this isn't a stock-based fund, so don't compare it to those returns. $1,000 invested into VGIT when it was created 13 years ago would have grown to $1,320. Don't freak out about that minimal growth. Bonds aren't expected to grow like stocks are. This is also a low cost fund coming in at 0.04%, which is 40 cents for every $1,000 invested. The risk level is at a two since it is a conservative to moderate fund. These are 100% US treasuries and the maturity date breakdown is currently at 53 and 46%. Okay, so what type of investor is VGIT for? The person who is looking to reduce volatility within their portfolio doesn't wanna take on additional levels of risk with a long-term bond fund and doesn't want the lower returns associated with short-term bonds. If you're someone who is further out from retirement, then a fund like this might not make sense to hold in your portfolio, but that doesn't mean that you can't. In the past, I preferred a bond ETF like BND, but I've since changed my mind and have switched to preferring VGIT right now. To be clear, I still like BND and would put it as my number two bond fund. But at this point, I like VGIT a little better. The main reason is because something like BND has around 25 to 30% allocated to corporate bonds, which are inherently more volatile compared to government treasuries. Corporate bonds are also more correlated to stocks than government treasuries. And for me, the point of holding bonds in the first place is to not be correlated to stocks. VGIT works well in a three fund portfolio. You'll also want to pay attention to where you hold your bond allocation. Generally, a more tax efficient place to keep this fund is in a pre-tax retirement account like a 401k or traditional IRA, followed by a Roth IRA. You'd probably want to avoid putting a bond fund in a taxable investment account at all costs if you can. From a behavioral perspective, I can understand why someone who is younger and a little more risk averse might want to add this to their portfolio. No, you won't be maximizing your returns during the good times, but you'll most likely reduce your overall losses during the bad times. It is not always about maximizing returns. It's also about being able to stay invested for longer than the people who think that they can handle stock market volatility in theory, but run for the hills when it actually happens. Now we need to talk about the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF VT. I used to dislike it, and to be honest, I don't invest in it, but I've come to my sense and realize the value in it. This fund seeks to track the performance of stocks across the whole world based on market cap. Think of this fund like VTI and VXUS combined into one fund. It's made up of around 9,500 stocks. Here are the one, three, and five year returns. Since this fund has international and these stocks have underperformed US recently, it makes sense why this fund is lagging behind something like VTI and VOO. $1,000 invested into this fund when it was created 14 years ago would have turned into $3,825. Here are the max drawdowns for this fund. We're currently in the middle of the largest drawdown, so we'll see how long it takes to recover. As with all of the other funds, this one is low as well, coming in at 0.07%, which is 70 cents for every $1,000 invested. Vanguard has the risk level at a four since this is 100% stocks, which is to be expected. Here's the sector breakdown with most of the money going into tech, financials, and healthcare. 61% of the holdings are in North America, followed by Europe and the Pacific. 58% is in US companies, followed by Japanese and UK companies. Since this fund is dominated by US, you can see that those types of companies make up the top 10. VT is great for someone who just wants to accept world market cap returns. I don't hate this strategy at all for someone who wants to be very hands-off, but not as hands-off by investing in something like a target date fund. Other than potentially having to add a bond allocation at some point in the future, this is the ultimate set it and forget it fund. Free stocks are down in the description. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and share this video with a friend. I'll see you in the next one, done.